The decades around the turn of the millennium saw huge changes taking place as global connectivity expanded along almost all dimensions. Now the repercussions of these changes were starting to feedback and be felt by all as the world started to move into an ever more dynamic state. Critical aspects of an industrial age set of institutions started to grind to a halt in the face of an ever more dynamic and complex environment that was presenting an ever more complex set of issues as societies were starting to become aware of the realities of living in a globally interconnected context. The expansion of supply chains and the rise of emerging markets, particularly China, was disrupting the global political and economic establishment that had been a source of stability and order for over half a century. The liberal economic order and democratic systems were stalling as they had failed to keep pace with the rapidly expanding social networks that now occupied people's time and attention. The level of inequality brought about by globalization and financialization was becoming almost unbearable for many societies. The impacts of a changing climate and multiple forms of environmental degradation were starting to become a reality. Centuries-old social, economic, and environmental structures had been irreversibly altered, and humanity was starting to find itself in uncharted territory. Stability was becoming the exception, no longer the norm, as massive upheavals have left the global economy, society, and environment unstable along many dimensions. Alongside all these developments, the information revolution was starting to enter into an even deeper and more radical phase in its development. Globalization is a complex multidimensional phenomenon, but at the heart of it is the formation of some kind of global organization. The level of globalization that we have achieved by now only happens through advanced forms of information and telecommunication technology. Without it, the formation of global supply chains and outsourcing would not have happened. Without it, the massive growth of multinational corporations would not have been possible. Without it, the financial system would be a mere shadow of what it is today. Although it was long apparent technology and market structures were the driving force at the heart of globalization that would profoundly change societies what exactly the outcome to that change process would look like had not been apparent. Now, a new set of information technologies were about to give us a glimpse into a future that looked very different from the past. Societies had lasted many decades at this stage, with a growing mismatch between their ever-expanding underlying technological means and the legacy institutional structures that sat on top of them. The platform revolution had shown us a new form of information-based organization, but the next stage in the Internet's evolution was about to take this to new levels, as economic organization and information networks were about to truly become one. The decades-long struggle between hierarchies and networks is now entering a new stage. As a new vision for the third-generation web is starting to take shape, and the end game for globalization is coming into focus. With the rise of platforms, the Internet had become a core structure supporting a new process of digital globalization, with a billion people around the world coming online every five years, the Internet had scaled rapidly, but as a consequence, this core infrastructure of the information revolution is now starting to creak under its own weight. 
We scale the internet by simply building out more cables and more computers within the same architecture. We went from servers to server farms to data centers to the hyperscale data centers that run the internet platforms of today. In the process, the internet had gone from a public utility to being operated by a small number of large platforms owned by private for-profit companies. The Internet had become something of a walled garden built around huge privately owned data centers. There are now some 400 hyperscale data centers in the world that each contain tens of thousands of servers. Almost half of these reside in the United States. These computers do the heavy lifting for the Internet. But this centralization of the Internet has resulted in a huge concentration of power in the hands of technology companies. The algorithms that run in these data centers operate these emerging networks that are used by billions daily, but they are understood and controlled by only a small handful of people. It was cloud computing that made the platforms of the second-generation Internet, but what would happen if that computing architecture changed? Today, in labs and startups, a new kind of Internet is being pieced together that may once again rewrite the rules for globalization. This next stage in the process of convergence and transformation of the global economy is enabled by a new set of information technologies as we are currently in the process of remaking the underlying software supporting the Internet, building what is called the decentralized web. This next stage of economic development works to decentralize economic activity and shifts operations to global information-based networks like never before, with truly profound consequences. The centralized cloud computers of today are changing as a new innovation in computing is making it possible to turn them into distributed computing networks. We can now simply design protocols that enable a collection of computers to work together as a single cloud computer in a distributed fashion. We can store data securely and run the same forms of complex algorithmic coordination on this computer, all without the need for the centralized platform. These protocols enable people to connect to each other within peer-to-peer -peer networks, to conduct transactions directly and securely without the centralized platform. All share one common database that all can trust because of its transparent nature and the need for consensus among peers. The decentralized web removes the Internet's dependency upon centralized systems to enable trust, security, value exchange, and computing resources. It creates networks for people to interact, create, or exchange value directly peer-to-peer, -peer, bypassing traditional market systems and existing institutional structures in radical ways. On top of these secure peer networks can be built new forms of economies. These decentralized economies work through a token system where each network creates a token that represents the underlying value that is being created and exchanged within that economy. People can then invest in that microeconomy by purchasing the tokens and likewise use them in that ecosystem. Through this token system, blockchains work to create a whole new economy and value system outside of the traditional utility-based market. The outcome of the information revolution, big data, Internet of Things, and advanced analytics is that we will be able to sense and quantify our world like never before. This will give us the capacity to quantify and begin to account for all forms of value. This is something that was previously not possible, as we simply did not have the information. As the data starts to flow in, as our capacity to process the information in real time matures through advanced analytics, we will increasingly have the capacity to quantify what people value in a more comprehensive way and begin to manage this through peer token markets instead of centralized organizations. 
token market economies can now be built for any resource that needs managing. What we see emerging is a global information network for mediating economic activity directly through distributed internet protocols and algorithms, bypassing traditional institutions that appear to be stalling in the face of the complexity that has emerged. At the heart of globalization has always been the potential for huge benefit to all through global collaboration. This global collaboration can potentially enable very rapid economic development for any society. By having a shared and trusted global computing network through which data can be shared and services delivered anywhere, this enables the potential for global collaboration like never before. In the past, we lived in a world of many different nations developing different solutions within their own countries individually, thus having each nation reinventing the wheel, with the result being slow progress and a massive amount of redundancy when taken as a whole. With the global information system of the Internet, it is now possible to collaborate on the same generic solution on the global level which is then duplicated and customized for the different geographies. The potential for this model, of creating once and duplicating many times, is vastly increased as we move into a global information and services economy, particularly when we add distributed technologies. With information technology, the capacity to duplicate information and ideas is radically increased. Likewise is the capacity to move them to any place on the planet at the click of a button. When this is combined with a new set of distributed technologies, such as solar cells, wind turbines, the blockchain, drones, 3D printing, a whole new model to economic development starts to emerge, one that has the potential to be radically more efficient, more distributed, and inclusive a model where global information networks allow for mass collaboration in the development of solutions online, like Wikipedia or the Linux operating system, and then the rapid duplication and deployment of these solutions virtually anywhere, thus holding out the possibility for a bottom-up era of global economic development. This potential has been there since the advent of the Internet, but is now greatly more viable due to this emerging secure and shared computing infrastructure. Because of the secure nature of these information systems, we can create economies and financial system natively on top of them that delivers the same quality of service anywhere on the planet. What is different this time is the autonomy of these systems. Our capacity to create systems of organization on the Internet and to coordinate human interaction directly through those to secure those networks and increasingly connect them up to real-world physical assets and technology means that these networks are increasingly starting to gain their independence. Secure value exchange can be built into the network, removing their prior dependence upon the traditional financial system and national regulatory framework. This works to greatly increase the autonomy of these new forms of networked institutions. Just as the multinational corporations and financial institutions carved out their own territory at the center of our global cities, so too these networks will create their own spaces, out on the edge of the system, in places like Haiti in the wake of disasters, in small jurisdictions, but also in cities, as urbanization changes the structure of power and governance and cities come to gain more autonomy and governance functions. Everything and everyone is starting to become connected and to find themselves embedded within a networked fabric of information that is wrapping around the world, disrupting the centuries-old structures that carved up the planet into separate jurisdictions and societies while the logic of hierarchical management within the national framework has retreated 
and the market has proven unsustainable. Information networks are emerging as the new form of globally distributed coordination. Token markets can potentially enable the management of self-sustaining economies in a distributed fashion, without dependence on the centralized institution of the nation or corporation. The responsibility is shifted to the hands of every person. The question is one of values. What values do we build into this set of emerging information-based networks that is being pieced together with every new connection made? The world of yesterday was ruled by the states and armies. The world of today by markets and finance. The world of tomorrow will be an empire of networks. But who will rule that empire? Could it be us?